this is Lady Boulay and I hope you're having a lovely day. Thank you for your support. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Thank you for your thumbs up, for your comments, and thank you for sharing the videos. Thank you for all you do to support the channel. Well, today, I'm going to get directly to it. I'm going to talk about Congresswoman Ilhan Omar, an African immigrant, gets a wake-up call. Congresswoman Ilhan Omar is smart, she's beautiful, she's passionate, and I don't think she's wrong about the things that she feels strongly about. But I think that she goes about things wrong. See, it's a mistake when a lot of these black immigrants really buy into the propaganda that they get fed about America when they're in their homelands. It's the land of the free and the home of the brave. You have freedom of speech. You can say anything you want to say about anybody you want to say it about. You have freedom of religion. You can worship wherever you want to worship. It doesn't matter about your race. It doesn't matter if you don't have any money. Come to America. It's the most beautiful place to live on earth. They buy into the propaganda. And if a black American tries to pull their coattail and say, that's not real, don't believe in that. They'll turn on you because they want to believe the propaganda. Well, we would like to believe the propaganda too, but we know the reality. A few years ago, I was in a beauty supply store in Stone Mountain, Georgia, and a young Somali man was managing the store. And one day we were just talking, having pleasant conversation, and he was telling me how much he enjoyed living in America because he had come from a refugee camp in Kenya. And so he was just going on about being in America and it didn't matter about your race and it didn't matter about your religion and everything was just perfect in America. I did not burst his bubble. I didn't say anything. My feeling has always been if you stay here long enough, you'll find out for yourself. Now, the reason I made the reference to the young Somali man is because yesterday after the Republicans kicked Congresswoman Ilhan Omar of that Foreign Relations Committee, she gave an impassioned speech in which she accused them of doing that to her because she's an immigrant from Africa and because of her religion, because she's African and a Muslim. So you don't have to tell them anything. If they stay here long enough, they'll find out for themselves. So if you are tempted to correct a black immigrant about what America is, don't. Don't risk making them turn on you because you try to correct them, even if you know you're right. Don't try to correct them. As the old folks used to say in my neighborhood, let the donkey kick them. So the donkey kicked Congresswoman Ilhan Omar. She got a swift kick in the you know where. They removed her from a position on a committee that she was very good at and that she clearly felt passionate about. But they stripped her as soon as that new Speaker of the House, Kevin McCarthy, got in office. He removed her. And I'm pretty sure that was one of the conditions that some of those Republicans had for voting for him to be Speaker of the House in the first place. They have an agenda. See, they're always thinking about what they're going to do. We're the ones going around happy-go-lucky thinking everybody's going to do what is right based on what we think. And nobody does what's right based on what we think. But she got it. She got that, she got that Negro wake-up call that she wasn't expecting, I don't think. But again, she's smart, and she was good on that committee. She knew how to grill people who came before that, that committee. Anybody who had done something wrong in the past, she knew about it. She knew how to cross-examine people who came before the committee. She could cross-examine like an experienced lawyer. And she'd have people squirming in their seats and sometimes saying things that they didn't mean to say. She was excellent at what she was doing. But she overplayed her hand. She still believes in the propaganda that you can say what you want to say in the United States of America. You have freedom of speech. You can go to the United States House of Representatives and make a difference. <laughs> Nobody told her that you can't piss the wrong people off. She has found out the hard way that the long arm of the law in America will come down on you and there's nothing you can do about it. I think they wanted her off that committee for a number of reasons, not the least of which she was really in depth in her questioning and was bringing things back to the public's awareness that they thought were buried. So she was dangerous in that way.
She overplayed her hand and she doesn't know when to back off and when to back up. She doesn't know when she's getting into dangerous territory. And by that I mean she doesn't know when somebody's getting ready to put a check on her. And that's been coming for quite some time. Rand Paul put the first check on her. And she's defiant. And that's dangerous in American politics. Ilhan Omar is one-fourth of the quartet of noisy, progressive women who call themselves the squad. Three of those people come from immigrant backgrounds and only one is an American and that is black American Ayanna Presley who is a congresswoman from Boston. Now these women want to shake things up. They want to change America. They have great ideas about how America ought to be run. They speak passionately about illegal immigrants and how many rights they should have. Ilhan Omar is always talking about what's going on in Palestine or somewhere else in the Middle East. She doesn't even advocate for Somalia. They have a, a food crisis in Somalia. They have a health crisis in Somalia. I have never heard them speak on issues that are of concern to black Americans, including reparations. And that's why I can dismiss this so-called squad, because their concerns are not my concerns. So who decided that she rubbed the wrong way? Well, it was the Jewish people. Republicans had sought to remove Ms. Omar from the powerful House panel over her past comments that they have interpreted as anti-Semitic. In 2019, she tweeted that Republicans wanted to condemn her comments about Israel because it's all about the Benjamins baby. A reference to Benjamin Franklin being on $100 bills. Ms. Omar later apologized for her remarks, but House Speaker Kevin McCarthy pressed for her removal nonetheless. Of course he did. Senator Bernie Sanders said it is an outrage that every Republican voted to remove Ilhan, a third-term Muslim American woman from the Foreign Affairs Committee. Our job is to unite the American people, not divide them based on their race and religion. What a disgraceful day for the House. Well, two things about that tweet. Number one, they're playing the race and religion card with Congresswoman Omar. But before, you know, they don't believe in that. They're Somalis. They're not black. They're Somali. Remember? And then the second thing is, he's supposing that the Republicans have shame. He said it was disgraceful. Republicans don't have shame. They have an agenda. And they work that agenda at all times. Congresswoman Omar has managed to get herself tossed from a very important committee. Now, in my critique of Congresswoman Ilhan Omar. I'm going to say that she either is missing the common sense gene or she doesn't have the gift of foresight. Now, Congresswoman Omar represents the 5th District of Minneapolis, Minnesota. That is the stronghold of the Somali people in America. Keith Ellison, who's a black American, used to represent that district. But when he decided to run for state politics, he encouraged her to run for his seat. So that's the seat that Keith Ellison used to have. When she was first elected, she was elected with 82% of support from the people in that district. In 2022, the last election, she barely squeaked by. She almost got beat. So she lacks something in judgment. Now, one of the things that she did, and I really critique her for this, when she came to the United States Congress, she was married to a Somali man that she called the love of her life. During her first term in office, she began an affair with a political consultant. Before the public got wind of it, it is reported that her husband, who was back in Minnesota taking care of their three children, came to her apartment in Washington, D.C., and there she was with this white man. They were lounging around in pajamas. He didn't catch them in the act, but he said it appeared as if they were in some type of romantic situation. And it is entirely possible that he was telling the truth because he went right on and filed for a divorce from her. And 37 days after that divorce was final, she married that white man, a nobody. And they have been accused of misappropriating campaign funds. So that's the kind of legacy she's building.
Now I say she lacks awareness because after they dismissed her from that committee, she got up and made this big impassioned speech in Congress about how she was going to be even more outspoken. She was going to talk even more. She was going to do even more of what she was already doing after she apologized for what she had said. So why are you going to go back and do more when you've already apologized? And the second thing is she doesn't understand the gravity of the position that she's in. She is the first Muslim woman from Africa to be elected to the United States Congress. That is not something to be taken lightly. She should be, in my opinion, networking with people who can actually help her to affect what it is she's trying to get done. Not going up there fighting with people and running her mouth and making people mad who are in very powerful positions. So I don't think common sense is her strong point. Case in point, it appears that she has turned the Somali people against her. Last fall, just before the election, the Somalis had a, a concert with a Somali rapper. She went up on stage with this white man and they booed her. The headline said she was booed by 10,000 Somalis. Now that's how you know you've disappointed your people. She was elected to advocate for the interests of the people of the 5th District of Minneapolis. Not to solve the problems in Israel. Not to solve the problems of immigration at the border. Not to solve the problems in Palestine. That doesn't mean she shouldn't be concerned about them and that she shouldn't network with other legislators to get bills passed on those people's behalf. But her primary responsibility is to the people of the 5th District of Minneapolis. And then it looks like they're just out there trying to get their name in the paper and trying to get on TV anyway. Because you can't do anything in the United States Congress if other people don't work with you. Four people cannot pass a bill. It takes 218 people to pass a bill. And so if you're not working with those people to get something passed, you're really just wasting the American taxpayer's money. You don't lose sight of what you're supposed to be doing for your own people to try to make a name for yourself. That squad, as they call themselves, AOC and this Tlaib woman from Michigan, Ayanna Presley and Ilhan Omar, that to me they're just attention seekers. So the rest of them, that, that's a harbinger with her getting kicked off that committee, that's a harbinger of things to come for the rest of them. Ilhan Omar got a real wake-up call. She was out there running her mouth, saying anything, getting up. You know, nobody can check me. Who going to check me? Well, the Republicans. That's who going to check you. And that's what they did. So she got the wake-up call. And now she's crying because she thought that <laughs> she had freedom of speech. <laughs> Maybe one of those very nice black American women will pull her aside one day and tell her, yes, baby, you have freedom of speech. You can say anything you want to in the privacy of your bathroom with nobody listening. That's your freedom of speech. I guess she never heard of Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. A wake-up call can shock your system, especially when it shatters everything that you believed or wanted to believe. But it can also be instructive. It teaches you how to move more carefully and more strategically. It's always something you can do, but you just have to figure out how you have to do it so that it doesn't come back and bite you. Okay, y'all, let me know what you think about this video. Thank you for listening. Subscribe to the channel. Give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment. Share the video. And as always, have a great day.